So, welcome to this lecture. This lecture uh, uh, comprises of uh, uh, discussion of uh, various research methods used in ergonomics. So, uh, in the previous lecture, we discussed about uh, various tools and techniques used for ergonomic assessment. So, here uh, some of the uh, uh, tools or we can say that uh, the philosophical manner of what are the research uh, methodologies uh, which are here to uh, perform any research uh, which is uh, basically based on ergonomics. So, in series with that, so uh, as far as previous lecture is concerned, we uh, covered uh, various tools and techniques for ergonomic assessment. <coughs> so, basically uh, if we start with the research, the so research is uh, basically uh, two kinds of research are there basic and applied. So, uh, in this basic research, res, uh, in this basic research, the development of theory, principles, and findings that generalized uh, over a wide range of uh, people, task, and settings. As an example, uh, like a series of studies, uh, we can take as an example that test the theory uh, that as a people practice a particularly act activity hundreds of times. So, it becomes automatic and uh, no longer takes uh, uh, conscious uh, uh, effortful uh, cognitive processing. And this applied research uh, can be defined as the development of any theory uh, principles that are uh, basically uh, those findings are uh, relatively specific uh, to, a, to a particular population and uh, task and it is uh, basically uh, uh, related uh, to some kind of application uh, that may be application may be the development of any product or any system. So, uh, there is a, a slight difference between this basic and applied research. So, uh, there are various research methodologies used in ergonomics. So, most uh, important and most uh, uh, frequently used uh, technique is survey and questionnaire. So, uh, most of the researchers measure a number of variables and evaluate about the relation of each other. In most of the cases, behavior of the workers are recorded while performing the task under various circumstances. So, uh, there are situations where conclusion is made on the basis of surveys and relevant questionnaire. So, uh, the goal of uh, scientific research is to describe, understand and predict uh, the conclusion made by uh, uh, predicting the relationship between variables. So, in that context uh, researchers use many descriptive methods which are uh, tools and techniques for uh, ergonomic assessment. So, uh, the first kind of uh, research method is a survey and a questionnaire and second is experimental research methods. So, in which a systematic analysis of risk factors is one of the experimental research methods. So, uh, those methods are uh, uh, HIOP and DST uh, etcetera. So, another uh, kind of uh, research methodology is ergonomic product design evaluation research. So, uh, while designing a product or any system, the sequence of operation is first we have to understand the need by the designer by involving user input. So, uh, involvement of uh, user is essential throughout the design uh, life cycle for meeting the actual requirement. Second is setting and implementation of guidelines in design, iterative usability testing beginning early in the design process. So, uh, the product design evaluation can be uh, simplified as we have to first understand the user design and then evaluation. So, in that context, this particular uh, figure is showing the cycle of 
system development here in this uh, we can say that those understand the user design and then evaluate so understanding is the first criteria second is then design and then evaluation so this whole cycle is uh, is for system development so in understanding uh, what factors come so error criticality we have to uh, understand user patterns goal functions and task user characteristics and expertise and operating environment so these all five factors we need to understand before uh, initiating the system development and then theoretical framework is uh, defined if uh, before uh, initiating its uh, uh, manufacturing of any particular work system so modeling and simulation is performed mental models uh, have been generated principles and, gui and guidelines have been assigned and dialogue styles and standards and then we come to the evaluation where the heuristic evaluation usability test and test evaluation test and evaluation is carried out so in that particular uh, generalized cycle of system development so as the technological uh, advancement is taking place uh, newer products are appearing so we can take any product for an example and uh, we can uh, as a reverse engineering we can uh, uh, analyze that particular part and from where it has started and from where uh, uh, what is the current state of that particular product is so with the help of reverse engineering we can analyze and we can uh, adopt uh, the uh, uh, methodologies uh, uh, for generating a new system or any product so uh, the requirement of designing a product is it should have a user uh, friendly it should be user friendly and equipped equipped with sophisticated design so uh, we can take any example in our surrounding like uh, keyboarding system including knee keyboard design or uh, mouse design we can uh, take chair uh, design we can take an example uh, any hand operated device so an example we can take these all uh, obviously computer uh, workstation we can choose uh, in order to uh, analyze the product and its related aspects in order to understand the <coughs> system development so that's why this particular uh, example i have put for you in order to uh, uh, take any any particular example and uh, check its uh, development uh, which has been uh, performed in the course of time so another uh, thing that we need to uh, understand that uh, research uh, which has been uh, done in the economic area especially in anthropometric uh, area that uh, kind of uh, anthropometric scaling technique have been uh, developed so in that context we can take this uh, uh, this particular uh, figure as an example to understand what uh, uh, this anthropometric scaling technique is all about so this if you are seeing uh, conveniently this is sh this is a stature height so here uh, this particular example is giving anthropometric anthropometric uh, scaling technique it is used when designing for users whose anthropometry is unknown sometimes uh, we deal with uh, we deal with a subset of a general population in which uh, in which case a scaling technique can be uh, used to simple uh, proportional estimate of body dimension so let's say if we have to like uh, stature height is defined as uh, 1800 and uh, now uh, you have to predict the uh, mean 
स्टैंडिंग एल्बो हाइट so in that series how will you calculate so this ratio is uh, is defined as a scaling uh, law so that you can take help and uh, with the help of this mean standing height can be predicted with the help of total stature height so here you can uh, multiply with the factor and you will get the uh, lean uh, you will get the exact uh, mean standing elbow height for a general person so uh, this particular figure is showing the linear body dimension expressed as a percentage of stature <coughs> so in this way uh, uh, the techniques have been explored for uh, uh, performing research so this anthropometric scaling technique is one of the kind of research technique through which uh, uh, the the particular proportion or uh, particular uh, height or length can be predicted on the basis of uh this proportion uh, that has been estimated uh, by uh, previously by some researcher so uh, in general uh, when we perform any experiment so uh, there is a uh, generalized steps that we need to follow so uh, like in in any uh, if we take example of uh, analysis of, uh, analysis of any ergonomic system so uh, in uh, research as far as experimental research methods are concerned so uh, there are several steps in conducting an experiment so those steps i am defining here so that in a general way uh, that can be uh, taken as a, as tool for uh, performing or conducting any experiment uh, in regards with designing any workstation or any ergonomic uh, system so here uh, basically there are five steps in uh, uh, in conducting an experiment so this particular uh, experiment uh, involves looking at the relationship between casual uh, uh, independent variable and uh, resulting changes in one more uh, one or more dependent variables which are typically measures of performance workload preferences or other subjective evaluation so uh, the first step in uh, like uh, steps in conducting any experiment <clears throat> first we define problem and hypothesis so in that uh, defining a problem on hypothesis a uh, researcher uh, first hypothesizes a relation between a number of variable and then sets up experiment uh, experimental uh, design to determine whether a cause and effect relationship uh, does in fact exist so in order to define the cause and effect uh, relationship this particular hypothesis is defined in the form of uh, defining number of variables uh, existing in that particular problem the second is specify the experimental plan so in that uh, specifying the experimental plan consisting of identifying all the detail of the experiments to be conducted so in that uh, defining the independent variable is an important part of creating the experimental design so which independent variable do we manipulate and how many levels of each uh, for example Uh, we might decide uh, to examine uh, the performance of three groups of workers uh, those on a day shift on a night shift or uh, in between uh, uh, alternating uh, and those alternating uh, between shifts so uh, this things we have to define as an independent variable and the third is uh, we have to conduct the study so uh, the researchers uh, obtain participants for the experiment uh, develop material and 
prepares to conduct the study. Like uh, if uh, a particular person is uh, unsure of any aspect of the study, so it is difficult to uh, perform a very small experiment, uh, a pilot study. So before conducting the entire real study, so after everything is checked through a pilot study, the experiment is uh, carried out and data is collected. The fourth is uh, fourth step is analyze the data. <coughs> so here, uh, suppose uh, uh, you would had uh, you would have a set of numbers. Uh, representing the keystroke errors for the people on changing work shifts, a set for the people in day shift and a set for the people for night shift. So, uh, data are analyzed uh, using both descriptive uh, and uh, inferential statistics to see whether there are significant differences among these groups or not. So, uh, data analysis is also very important in that context. So, uh, the fifth step is uh, you have to draw some conclusion. In that, uh, based on the results of uh, statistical analysis, the researchers draw some conclusion about the cause and effect relationships uh, in the uh, performed experiment. So, at the simplest level we can say that uh, whether a hypothesis were supported uh, or not. So, uh, it means uh, to determine whether this particular hypothesis that we have drawn is uh, supported or not. So, in applied research it is often important to go uh, beyond the obvious. So, whatever the uh, results are coming we have to draw our own conclusion. Uh, and it should it may be uh, similar to what is existing or it may not if it is uh, somewhat distinct what uh, has been uh, uh, found so it it is a new finding and, and then it is called as a research so uh, identifying underlying reasons uh, whether it be whether it may be uh, coming in the psychological or physiological so uh, the development of uh, useful uh, uh, principles and guidelines uh, emerge out when uh, this particular uh, uh, research is used to perform. So, in that way these uh, are the 5 steps uh, in conducting a particular experiment. So, uh, this may be useful for any, uh, uh, any experiment or uh, in designing any particular thing. So, uh, with this I am uh, closing this lecture, I hope uh, you will have uh, found some, uh, uh, you have found something, uh, something distinct than what you know and uh, uh, till then uh, next, uh, till the next lecture continues, uh, goodbye for now, thank you.